BenClark.com. I am Banjo Ben, your host here on the website to teach you how to play banjo, guitar, and mandolin. If you're watching on the website as a Gold Pick member, you've got everything you need right here on this page, the MP3 jam tracks, the rest of the video segments, and don't forget to ask questions below and I will answer them. We're gonna do part one of the Teardrop Banjo Backup series. This is a very, very helpful technique to have, especially as you're playing those slower songs and it gets into weird keys and you, it, I'm gonna help you out, okay? If you're watching this on Facebook or YouTube or wherever else, you can come over to the website, join as a Gold Pick member, see this whole lesson. Now let's jump right into the theory first and then we'll get into the patterns of Teardrop Banjo Backup. Hey y'all, today is part one of our Teardrop Backup series for the banjo. What is Teardrop Backup? Well, it sounds a little bit like this. And I don't really know why it's called that, except that this type of backup is used a lot on your slower songs, although you can get to playing it really fast. And a lot of times those slow songs perhaps make you shed a tear, perhaps they break a heart or two. And so this is the type of backup that you might play with for something like that. And so we're just going to introduce you to the theory of it today, show you some single and double measure patterns, show you how to use that dominant uh, chord tone. And as we progress through the series, we'll begin working in three quarter time and also how to work in some licks and bends and all kinds of cool things like that, just to help beef up your backup. Now, what are we doing whenever we do this teardrop backup? Let's, let's start with a little basic theory. Uh, just to show you where it comes from because there's a foundational position that this all, all of these shapes are based off of and that's just our open bar chord. If you tune the banjo to an open G chord and you just play down through the strings you'll get a G chord. And that means that if we were to have our finger replace this nut down here and move up and grab all the strings you could keep doing that all the way up. So if we were to just bar across all the strings we would keep getting major chords as we go up. And that is actually exactly what we're doing with this teardrop backup. We're taking a bar chord and forgetting all of the strings except the bottom two using those. And then we're going to pivot off those to get some different, some different positions. Okay. Now it's really um, a good thing to know because if you're playing a song um, and it's in an odd key, or you don't know how to find a chord, you can always find where to do this teardrop backup. And the way that you're gonna find it, the easiest way at first is to find the root of the chord on your third string. What I mean by that, our third string here, it's a G chord, it's a G string, right? And if we play through our strings, it's a G note, and which makes sense because this is a G chord. If we were to bar up, what note would that turn into? It would turn into an A note, and sure enough, a bar chord here would be an A chord. If we were to come all the way up, there it's a D note. If we were to bar there, there's a D chord. So if someone says, ah, I need some quick, you know, some backup uh, for a slow song in B flat, well, what I'm gonna think quickly until you get used to it is where can I find a B flat on my third string? And you can find one right here, okay? Or you can come all the way up and find one there, make a bar chord there, and play some of these teardrop shapes. So it's really handy backup, and there's all kinds of different patterns that we're gonna get into, and you can get faster and faster with it um, as you get more and more used to it. Let's now look at a single measure pattern um, and run through the different chords with it, but you can always take these to any chord that you want. Throw out the first line of tab there, we're going to be working off of this 12th fret. Now what chord would that be? Well, you can read it there, that's a G chord, but why would it be? Well, that's because our third string is a G note. So if we're working there, that's going to be a G chord. We're just taking the very top two notes, or bottom two, however you want to think about it. There. Now, as far as our fret hand positions for these single measure um, patterns, I will often play with my middle two fingers and I'll tell you um, why is because I will many times want to play a lower fret on the second string. So doing things like that, doing things like that. So that's going to keep me sometimes from barring where I can't go back and, and play lower. Okay. So I would like for you to practice both. But for right now, since I'm not going to go up above the what my pinky can grab, uh, we're going to start there with our middle two fingers. And I'm not going to worry about sliding into it yet. 
that's after you get the patterns down. You can work sliding into it. But let's play those, and we're going to play two thumbs in a row, and then alternate with our middle and thumb, and then two middles. And I'm also swinging it one and two and three and four in. And it also helps to bring your hand up away from the bridge to get a sweeter tone. So that's a single uh, measure pattern, meaning you could take that pattern and take it all over the place. If you had a measure of G and then a measure of A, not a problem. You just haul it around wherever you want. Now I'll put it together with measure three there with another single measure pattern that's a little bit different. And it starts the same way, but it's going to end on a quarter note. So those two single measure patterns together sound like this. So it could work as a double.